This week at the Open Source Summit in Bilbao, the Linux Foundation announced the official launch of Open Tofu. We have an announcement for a new project called Open Tofu. This is That's right. This is a drop-in replacement for Terraform. It's open source. It is neutrally housed at the Linux Foundation uh, and hits that sweet spot of open source and open governance. It's certainly been a really eventful few weeks in the Terraform world. And in this video, I want to answer some of the most commonly asked questions around Terraform, OpenTF, and OpenTofu and see what it all means for the future. Let's kick off with our first question. Who is behind OpenTofu? OpenTofu is the result of a group of industry leaders that came together in response to Terraform changing its license from the open source Mozilla public license to a non-open source business source license back in August. They formed a group called OpenTF, which published a manifesto laying out its intention to ensure that either Terraform remains a freely open source tool, or if that wasn't going to be possible, then to fork the Terraform project to ensure that the community has an open source tool going forwards. The OpenTF initiative was publicly backed by hundreds of companies, some of those pledging significant resources, including paying for full-time engineers over a number of years. The conclusion of the manifesto was enacted some time later, leading to the forking of the Terraform project into a new project called OpenTofu. OpenTofu aims to build on top of the great work that's been done by HashiCorp over the years to grow Terraform into the tool that it is today, and to ensure that it can continue to innovate and grow as a truly open source tool forever. To dive a bit deeper into the Terraform license change and what led to the formation of OpenTF, then check out our last video, which I'll link up at the top here. Question number two. Why have the Linux Foundation launched OpenTofu? The OpenTF initiative was always committed to keeping Terraform, or a fork of it, a truly open source tool, and guided by the community at large and not influenced or biased in favour of anyone's commercial interests. And the only way to achieve that is to donate the project to a reputable foundation that can ensure that the governance remains impartial and rooted in open source principles. So when OpenTofu was officially launched to the community this week, it was done so under the Linux Foundation. The Linux Foundation is a beacon of integrity in the open source world, serving as custodians for many of the open source tools that we use today, including the Linux kernel itself. And many other foundation projects exist under the umbrella of the Linux Foundation, such as the CNCF. So being maintained and governed by the Linux Foundation ensures that OpenTofu is in a safe pair of hands and has the trust, support and resources of the community to drive adoption and innovation that we all benefit from. So let's take a closer look at the OpenTofu project itself. Question three, will OpenTofu be a drop-in replacement for Terraform? So the first release of OpenTofu will be completely compatible with the latest MPL release of Terraform, which was 1.5.5. So all the features and compatibility that you find in Terraform 1.5 today will be matched in OpenTofu as it releases. The only foreseeable difference when you switch from Terraform to OpenTofu will be the binary on the CLI. You shouldn't need to make any changes to your code to migrate to OpenTofu if you're coming from Terraform 1.5. Going forward, OpenTofu intends to adhere to semantic versioning, meaning so long as the project remains in the 1.x major version range, no changes will be introduced that will break backwards compatibility with open source releases of Terraform. So yes, initially OpenTofu will be a drop-in replacement for Terraform and the migration should be seamless. Question number four. Will OpenTofu work with my existing state file? Short answer is yes. OpenTofu state files are identical to Terraform state files and you won't need to perform any migration tasks when it comes to your state to switch from Terraform to OpenTofu. As we've said, OpenTofu is completely committed to making sure that the first releases are completely compatible with Terraform 1.5. So you can just drop it in place and it will read in your existing state file exactly the same as Terraform would have done. While there are some plans to build some extra features around state files, such as end-to-end -end encryption, which is a feature that many users have been pushing for for a long time, while some of these features might be added to the early releases of OpenTofu, it won't be done in a way that introduces any breaking changes to how your state file is read. And you'll still be able to just drop in OpenTofu to read and write from your existing state file with no issues. Question number five. Will Terraform modules and providers continue to work with OpenTofu? This one gets asked a lot, and short answer is yes. OpenTofu is forked from the last MPL release of Terraform, so it retains all of the capabilities to integrate with modules and providers that Terraform does. So OpenTofu will continue to work with all of the providers and modules that you use today, and you don't have to worry about migrating to alternatives. Question number six, still related to providers and modules, 
Will OpenTofu operate its own registry? Yes, OpenTofu will be hosting its own registry for modules and providers to keep the whole OpenTofu ecosystem within its own domain. By hosting its own registry, OpenTofu will give users the ability to plug and play modules and providers in much the same way as they did with Terraform. At the time of recording, the registry has not been rolled out yet. In the meantime, you can just download whatever modules and providers you use into a local folder and run them from there. Check out the link in the description to keep track of developments around the OpenTofu registry as the release date gets closer. Question 7. How will future functionality and feature changes to OpenTofu be decided? Since OpenTofu is not maintained by one particular entity and is under the governance of the Linux Foundation, decisions about feature additions and other directional issues will be steered by committee. Anyone is free to propose a change or a feature by opening up an RFC against the project. There's then an established procedure to discuss the proposal and to decide whether or not to start work on it, weighed on the merits and benefits to the community. Ultimately, all future decisions regarding new features and changes to the OpenTofu project will be guided by the community and impartially overseen by the foundation. While you can't please everyone with what features are added and how they're implemented, this ensures that changes are made for the right reasons in response to what the community in general needs. Question number eight. Why should I switch to OpenTofu? There's a few answers to this question, but the fundamental one being that Terraform since its launch has always been an open source tool, and now it's not. So if open source is important to you when deciding to commit to a infrastructure as code tool, then moving forward with a tool released under a business source license is not gonna check that box for you. Secondly, as we've already discussed, Features and changes to OpenTofu will be entirely guided by the community and not influenced or biased by a particular commercial entity. Thirdly, there's no guarantee that the license terms won't change in the future, and your use of Terraform while covered under the license today might not be covered tomorrow. And that level of uncertainty isn't a good basis for choosing a tool that underpins your entire infrastructure. With OpenTofu, you know you've got a project that's going to stay open source forever and that the features and changes that are being incorporated into future releases are being driven by the community. Question number nine. How can I contribute to OpenTofu? We're glad you asked. OpenTofu wants and needs community engagement and contributions. There's so many different ways that you can contribute to the project. Suggest new features or changes to OpenTofu to improve the product by raising an RFC. Take ownership of agreed tasks and work on coding a solution and presenting a pull request. Reviewing other proposed changes. Improving the documentation. Identifying and fixing bugs and other issues within the project. However you want to contribute to the project, you're going to be very welcome. But with the amount of people involved in the OpenTofu project and the complexity of the code base, it's important that we all work in a transparent, orderly way to ensure that valuable contributions are incorporated, but the stability and integrity of the application is maintained. In order to make that possible, there's an established set of guidelines that determine how we all work together and how we track issues from proposals to RFCs right the way through to committed code. You can find out more about this in the OpenTofu Contributors Guide. I'll leave a link below in the description. So hopefully this video has answered some of the more common questions around the recent OpenTofu launch. To stay up to date with all the latest news and developments around the project, then check out the website at opentofu.org. You can also follow the project on X, formerly known as Twitter, at OpenTofu.org. Get involved directly with the community on the OpenTofu subreddit. Or check out the GitHub organization at github.com slash OpenTofu. If you like this video, then hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel so you don't miss any more updates. My name's Craig Dunn, developer advocate over at Spacelift. Until the next time.